Welcome to the Bio Whisperer channel. Our topic today is on a perspective overview of the edible vaccines. So let's discuss in this short video the roles of using crops as vaccination delivery systems, which is coded under plant biotechnology or green biotechnology. In recent years edible vaccine emerged as a new concept developed by biotechnologists. Edible vaccines are subunit vaccines where the selected genes are introduced into the plants and the transgenic plant is then induced to manufacture the encoded protein. Given that 30 million children throughout the world do not receive even the most basic immunizations each year. As a result, at least 3 million of these children die from diseases that are fully vaccine preventable. The solution might be actually simple given the concept of edible vaccines lies in converting the edible food into potential vaccines to prevent infectious diseases. Edible vaccines are called by several alternative names such as food vaccines, oral vaccines, subunit vaccines, and green vaccines. They seem to be a viable alternative especially for the poor and developing countries. Traditional vaccines are costly and require skilled medical people for administration and are less effective in inducing mucosal immune response. The concept is simple, using crops and attempting to achieve stable production of antibodies within plants for passive immunization. First reported in 1990, an edible vaccine generated within tobacco leaf transgenically modified with a surface protein from streptococcus. This is then followed by work on hepatitis B and heat labile toxin, B subunit in tobacco plants and potato tubers. Crop scientists in fact observed that potato tubers see an increased accumulation when optimized as an expression system. Potatoes does have an issue though which we will elaborate in a moment. Taken simply, crop scientists can execute with the idea of large-scale production of edible vaccines for various diseases. It involves introduction of selected desired genes into plants and then inducing these altered plants to manufacture the encoded proteins. Foods under such application include potato, banana, lettuce, corn, soybean, rice, and legumes. They are easy to administer, easy to store and readily acceptable delivery system for different age group patients yet cost effective. Edible vaccines present exciting possibilities for significantly reducing various diseases such as measles, hepatitis B, cholera, diarrhea, etc., mainly in developing countries. With the premise being an edible vaccine can safely generate significant immune responses in large number of people, edible vaccines offer exciting possibilities for significantly reducing the burden of diseases like hepatitis and diarrhea, particularly in the developing world where storing and administering vaccines are often major problems. In fact, the concept of proteins produced in these plants induce the mucosal immune response can give rise to possible inclusion within the global vaccination program. Some of the key concerns at least for now is about distribution, accessibility, and for developing nations, cost-effectiveness, is indeed a major concern. Choices wise, the selection of the host plant for edible vaccine delivery might require thoughts on platability, whereas vaccine for animal use can be added into animal feed, raw consumption might not be a big concern. Potato tubers for instance do not taste nice or appealing when eaten raw by humans. Unfortunately the cooking process breaks down about 50% of the proteins in the vaccine, it is possible to engineer heat tolerance in the vaccine proteins though. Fruits that can be grown in tropics such as bananas and tomatoes might be great alternatives. As for a quick overview regarding suitable plants explored thus far. Crop researchers have tested tobacco, potato, maize, corn, legumes and alfalfa amongst others. Conventional subunit vaccines are expensive and technology intensive, need purification, require refrigeration, and produce poor mucosal response. Edible vaccines activate both mucosal and systemic immunity, as they come in contact with the digestive tract lining, which is not possible with subunit vaccines, which provide poor mucosal response. This dual effect of edible vaccines provides first-line defense against pathogens invading through mucosa. 
Some benefits associated includes these vaccines being edible means of administration without the need of medical personnel and syringes. Sterile injection conditions are no more required, which is challenging in rural village vaccination drives. Economical in mass production by breeding compared to an animal system. Easy for administration and transportation with possible storage near the site of use. Heat stable, thus eliminating the need of Refrigeration Effective maintenance of vaccine activity by controlling the temperature in plant Cultivation Most importantly, therapeutic proteins are free of pathogens and toxins. The minor concerns associated with edible vaccines includes consistency of dosage from fruit to fruit, batches and generations. Stability of vaccine in fruit is not known and require further studies especially given that it is tedious in evaluation of dosage requirement is tedious. Whilst the thoughts on concentrating the dosage might be better compared to serving the whole fruit especially when delivering the vaccines to babies or children. Finally, the selection of best plant is difficult especially for long-term preservation. Tomatoes serving as edible vaccines can be made into paste form for longer-term storage as a trial. We should expect to see more creative innovations to help address these minor concerns in the future. The road ahead. We see a lot of promise for edible vaccines, which are currently being developed for a number of human and animal diseases. This new technology hopefully will contribute positively toward the global vaccine programs and have a dramatic impact on health care in developing countries. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to this channel for future updates. If you like this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to this channel for future updates.